thank you all uh, for being present here. Uh, as uh, Vishwas has already given an uh, introduction about myself, I work as a staff engineer here at InfraCloud in uh, DevOps SRE space. At InfraCloud, I mainly work to help customers with handling their uh, needs in regards to uh, DevOps, infrastructure design, modernization, and stability for the application using a cloud native tech stack that uh, revolves around Kubernetes, you can say. Uh, as part of my consulting work, I uh, at InfraCloud, I happen to work on implementation of Argo CD and Flux CD uh, for different customers. And that's how I thought maybe whatever I have learned there uh, that I can share with you all. GitOps is a big topic, and uh, but compared to that, we have limited time today. So I'm aiming to cover most of all these things uh, in like two and a half hours or so. So we'll need to keep that discussion a kind of focused and concise. Uh, that said, I still encourage you all to ask questions at any time. And I want to make sure everyone leaves uh, this training with some clear understanding around GitOps. And uh, uh, lastly, we'll be covering from basic to intermediate all the materials uh, that we'll be covering today. I hope will help you. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, Let's get started to explore the world of GitOps. Okay. Uh, so, agenda wise, uh, I would say GitOps is a, a very becoming uh, popular and uh, a kind of de facto continuous uh, deployment standard in uh, Kubernetes infrastructure. Uh, initially, uh, when I said yes for this session, I thought I will keep it as a beginner, that is 101 level. But while preparing content, I felt like uh, I can go much level further and uh, I can go to the intermediate uh, level to cover things around GitOps, what principle it has, uh, what benefit it's add you for organization. Uh, and uh, we'll be covering the hands-on as well on two most popular open source tool. Uh, one is the Argo City, another is the Flux City. Both are recently CNCF graduated, okay? Uh, so consider that this entire session would be like 35, 30 to 35% theory and rest all will be kind of practical. Uh, to avoid creating clusters on your local machines, I uh, have prepared online labs for you on Cloud Yuga platform. Thanks to them to let me leverage their platform. Uh, so my assumption here is uh, you all are familiar with Kubernetes, Docker, and uh, packet management tools like Helm and Customer, right? And uh, hope you have your GitHub account as well as your PAT key personal access token already generated as uh, Vishwas shared yesterday in email. Okay, so we'll be covering all these aspects that are being highlighted here. So uh, what is GitOps? You can consider that uh, what DevOps to cloud is what GitOps to cloud native. Okay, so in uh, today's world, no one like to do manual work. Uh, any sort of work that is repetitive, redundant, after a time can become an error prone as well. Every company nowadays looking to improve the uh, developer experience, developer efficiency, because in today's world, have seen uh, that at some or most of the hours, developer not only has to write the code, uh, they have to maintain their dev system, they have to uh, do the release on their own, uh, they have to push the artifact, they have to work closely with QA teams. And when someone tries to do too many things, uh, you can consider that it breeds many issues on its own and uh, result into the inefficiency of developers, sometimes frustrations as well. What all that dev inside me keeps saying to me is that in ideal world, I should just focus on writing code, that's it. Everything else should be taken care and uh, that's what led to this GitOps movement. Uh, in Kubernetes GitOps world, developers just need to push their changes to Git and without minimum or to less disruption or efforts from DevOps, SRE, or nowadays we call it platform team, you would be able to carry your releases and maintain your ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so, why GitOps is uh, so much helpful? Because it helps you to declare your entire infrastructure. Uh, it helps you with the continuous deployments. That means uh, the deployment cycle will be faster. 
the faster the deployment cycle faster you will be able to find out things and uh, fix them it improves collaboration uh, async collaboration i would call it as uh, no one need to be always in touch with each other uh, they can just rely on git as a source of truth and yeah it does bring the monitoring aspect as well you can monitor all your infrastructure by looking at your uh, git repositories okay so we have already this ci cd right then why we need again uh, gitops uh, there are two main challenges that i personally see with gitops uh, sorry ci cd uh, first is in ci cd your continuous integration tooling uh, need access to your cluster and uh, they basically need to have access to your api server api server credentials and that means your ci tool can become a high value target for attackers if someone breaks into your ci tool system they will have total control of your production clusters even if your cluster is highly secure this is the one challenge that i see with ci cd second is in case of disaster recovery what happens when you let's say uh, need to recreate ent your entire cluster in case of issues currently if you want to use ci cd to build your application again you would have to run all your ci jobs to rebuild things and then reapply that workload to your clusters uh, and compared to that gitops helps you to bring the clusters as it is looking at just the last changes or last state of your infra configuration as well as application configuration in the git so that's what uh, gitops bring to the table from security wise uh, this is how gitops handle security as you could see uh, your ci tooling uh, will remain outside the cluster while your cd gets moved inside your cluster only and uh, so ci system now don't need to have access to cluster and cd system will only have read based access to pull the images that's how you can uh, consider it helps to uh, separate the privileges as well for you guys okay so now in terms of benefits it increase uh, speed and productivity for developers it brings some sort of you can say uh, self service approach now you don't need some manual operator like i recall in my previous organization there was one team who just need to be there to trigger the deployments with gitops it empowers you all to be more efficient strategic uh, you don't need a separate operator gitops operator act for you and handle your deployments uh, declarative approach that means you are basically coding everything uh, no need to have a imperative commands always uh, it brings the mo monitoring aspect observability as well uh, it will always let you know what is missing in your infra compared to what you ideally expected next you can say is like a compliance and auditing capabilities okay uh, so now because all you have your changes in git uh, on a infra or app side it does helps uh, with the auditing capabilities i recall in recent is audit uh, when i joined the is auditors meeting they did ask me about how i am managing things how i am auditing everything for one of the internal application that i was working on and i told them that we have this gitops system and he was very happy uh, and did not ask me anything further because he knew that now with the gitops system i have all everything in my git repository only from auditing perspective okay uh, from multi cluster configuration management as well uh, gitops tools does help you you can deploy the uh, changes application changes or infra changes to your multiple applications from the gitops tooling itself infrastructure as a code again just like terraform you can code everything security i have already talked about and uh, so with the disaster recovery as well right so this is all what uh, gitops brings to you in terms of benefit and uh, now before moving ahead and talking about the principle of gitops uh, i just want to uh talk about two terms that you would hear from anyone following the gitops uh those are the desired state is a one term and actual state is another so what is desired state and actual state uh think of uh, your room okay and think it's a messy at the moment you have your bed you have your desk full of papers you have some books lying here and there and so this is your 
actual state of the room now imagine you want your room to be organized and clean you have somewhere in mind that this is how my room should look like that's kind of your desired state you can say okay and similarly in gitops world as well uh using the computer programs you can say we kind of define some rules that this is how my kubernetes cluster should look like this is how my application inside the kubernetes cluster should look look like and uh, for that we give him the reference to this automation that look at my git and just always make it work as that and that's how then uh, i would say your desired state and actual state inside cluster gets matched with each other okay so now coming back to the principal things again uh, declarative description is the first thing uh, you can say this is the kind of characteristic that if you cannot define something in a declarative way you cannot call it as a gitops second principle is a single source of truth that means any change any minor change as well at all if you want to promote in your infrastructure or on our application side those should be done via git should not be done outside git and that's the reason we say that uh, you should have one and only one single source of truth that is your git repositories uh canonically version desired system state that's also one of the key principle let's say you have stored your current uh, state with semantic versioning like 1.0.0 in git now you want to apply a minor patch uh, be it is kind of application configuration you can commit that change uh, which say number like 1.0.1 and if that uh, minor change does not bring the expected result you can always roll it back uh, to your previous 1.0.0 state so you should be able to canonically uh, version your system uh, automatically approving changes so once you have declared your state in uh, git next step is to have the your gitops system should have the ability to automatically apply those changes and bring your desired state mentioned in a git uh, inside your kubernetes cluster okay and uh, last but not least uh, this is also important uh, principle is configuration drift detection if you call your automation or system as a uh, gitops then it should be able to detect the any kind of drift so uh let's say i have deployed an nginx deployment with three pods inside kubernetes cluster and the same is been mentioned in my git repository now if someone manually tries to go connect to the cluster and uh, maybe delete one pod or uh, scale down the pod from 3 to 2 but in your git it is mentioned as 3 then your gitops tool should able to let you know that hey this is what we actually expected in git but this is what i actually see inside your kubernetes cluster there is some drift happening okay so configuration drift is basically you can say some undesired changes that knowingly or unknowingly you bring to your actual state of the cluster okay uh, i hope it's clear till here or uh, if anyone has question just do let me know sure i think uh... I have allowed them to chat and I have allowed them to unmute themselves. So you can unmute yourself and ask a question. So all the participants can unmute and ask the ask the questions here. All right. So anything in chat or uh, anything in uh, unmute and ask? You can just go and ask, but. uh starting the video has been turned off now so i think nina you should not turn off your camera now all right so there's no nothing as a question i think you can start continue okay uh cool so uh this that's how i wanted to show you how your gitops system still fits inside the ci cd system okay uh you can say gitops will basically a replacement of your cd part your ci part will still remain untouched like your developers will create their feature branch for their changes create a merge request then uh, once merge request is been reviewed it will be accepted and it will create a kind of uh, your package 
uh, we call it as a, like a Docker image and push it to your Docker container registry, right? So this is like a typical CI part that nowhere here GitOps is touching to you. Then once you push that image, that's where uh, your GitOps system will come here. Uh, it will detect, okay, there is a new version change. It will update your deployment files accordingly. Uh, here I have taken an example of Argo CD, but it can be Flux CD or any uh, standard GitOps tool set. Okay, from here onwards, your actual GitOps journey begins. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, I have one question here. Not... Mm -hmm. Go on. So, uh, does that mean that it will completely replace the CD? Because uh, normally we have a uh, CD stage, like uh, for example, if you have multiple stages, uh, mm -hmm. like UAT, then acceptance, and then production, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, there will be still a CD part, right? Which will do something, or Argo CD so, or this ops will completely replace the CD part. So, uh, in real world, it's uh, you, whatever your CD system providing to you as of now that all things will be anyhow be provided by GitOps. So you can say that the CD part will be replaced by the GitOps system. Your CD part normally, the responsibility of CD part is to deploy the things, right? For you, be it is any environment you have. And uh, that's what GitOps will do for you without the uh, intervention of any, uh, uh, any human operator. So what CD, originally was bringing to you, GitOps still providing you, uh, but in an automated way. Does that answer your question? Yeah, kind of partially, but yeah, because uh, I'm still in doubt, like uh, the pushing image to Docker container registry. Mm -hmm. um, is it a, like always a CI part or because if you have multiple environment and uh, that means it all have their own uh, container part. registry, right? Right, right. Okay. So what okay. you would do is uh, for every environment, you can have your GitOps system defined. Be it is staging, be it is production. Okay. Uh, let's say take an example of QA system. You have your QA system. You have a separate container registry for that. You will have your separate GitOps agent working for that environment who will keep an eye on your QA container registry. Mm -hmm. And whenever it sees the new application image version available, it will trigger and bring that change inside your QA Kubernetes clusters. QA environment, basically, you can say. OK, OK. That means uh, when there is a CI pipeline, uh, mm -hmm. so that CI pipeline will create a build and then after creating a build, a Docker build basically, or image that will push to, for example, initially dev stage. And then uh, it will push to the once developer, okay, feel that, okay, he's confident, then it will go to the uh, uh, QA stage. But mm -hmm. that all will go to the CI part, you mean to say. And then again, uh, 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 when QA is okay with the outcome, it will go to mm -hmm. the acceptance stage. So uh, all this stage will be part of CI to create at least uh, or push basically image to the container registry. Yes. So CI's responsibility, as long as the image is pushed in your container registry, be it is dev environment or QA, uh, your CI, uh, CI part will be still there. What you can imagine in this way. Okay, even developer need to test whatever changes or image they are pushing, right? Yep. So once they push that new image into your container registry for dev environment, mm -hmm. someone has to be there who will pull that image and deploy it for you, right? In the yep. dev environment. Correct. Right? So now here you can consider your GitOps agent for dev environment will do that job. Consider you have three different uh, container registry, one for dev, one for QA, one for prod. Developer push the CI pipeline of dev environment. It will push that image to your uh, CI. Uh, it will push that image into the container registry for dev environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have your seed uh, GitOps agent of dev environment 
watching constantly your uh, dev image registry the moment right. it see new changes been there it will pull that change and it will push that change uh, into your dev environment now if it is once it is deployed once developer is uh, happy with that then he will promote uh, that image you can say from your dev container registry to your staging uh, container registry again then the gitops agent present inside the uh, your staging ecosystem will watch that new changes has been there and it will deploy yeah it will let is... you extend that way okay that is clear only thing i was not getting like how to promote the image from uh, uh, development to that uh, from development to qa uh, acr okay. registry so that was like uh, how we normally what is the way stand practice people do it's uh, in in which yeah, stage so that standard existing practice will remain as it is it won't be affected by uh, gitops okay okay cool uh, i hope my screen is still visible to you all right yes in that one question just before sure go on so you mentioned like this uh, gitops principles don't apply to ci process they are mm -hmm. only to the cd process right? but yeah. if you see from a perspective like you have a github repo and someone does a pr so you can still trigger a pipeline and other things so this is kind of a principle of git driven operations only right where you have automated it by making changes to the git code and this is resulting into pipelines being triggered in a completely automated way so why we still call it like gitops is for cd and not for ci uh so there is i would say difference between git driven and uh, the way gitops principle states right what you are defining as you mentioned the pr uh, pipelines and all you can consider yeah that could be a part of gitops ecosystem uh, but but i would put it in this way that you can say uh, your changes that you are doing okay are those changes are declarative in nature are those changes are getting automated apply if if let's say your ci system is following all those principles that i mentioned then you can consider it a true gitops system else you can eliminate it am i able to oh, okay. eliminate it yeah but then pretty much all principles are followed the only thing is it is not pulling but there is a push mechanism to whenever there is a change in the git you push it to the pipeline right rather than pull it mechanism there is a follows a pull kind of mechanism right right maybe yeah, that could be one difference i would i would add one more point in normal git driven pipeline it's one way you are doing the changes in the git and you are pushing to the environment but there is no validation right but what dinath said it says desired state with uh, you know current state so that is the more more advantage right so it's a two way in the tops yep okay thanks yep. okay i think we can yeah thanks sunil okay so now we will move towards that gitops rule uh, so argo cd uh, i would say uh, is one of those two popular open source gitops tools okay uh, apart from flux so we will start with argo cd first reason because it is uh, becoming a popular choice uh, it is been developed by argo community which is a you can say a group of developers building uh, tools for the kubernetes uh this argo city tool was first developed in 2018 and it's still not working so what na ah you are my mom and you sorry suresh can you say that again suresh you were asking something I think they had some uh, question. I think Suresh, Amit had some question. I think you can unmute yourself, but do not have an unmute option clicked by mistake. So not a problem. We are editing the video. I think Nikun just joined. Suresh has joined. I think 
you guys can ask the question so yeah so what i was saying maybe it was by mistake okay okay uh, by suresh okay 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 got it okay i'll do one thing from now on i'll just make sure that uh, when the speaker says is there any questions uh, you can just put it in the uh, direct chat here or else what you can do is when the speaker says is there any questions i'll allow to unmute and you guys can unmute yourself then and and maybe what you can use uh, is we have that reaction option right you can raise your hands there and uh, maybe vishwas you can uh, If I can unmute, hand, unmute them. Yeah, you can unmute them. Okay. Yeah, that that can be done. So yeah, I'm unmuting. I'm I'm removing the unmute option. So yeah, Nina, you can continue. Okay, good. So uh, going back again, uh, Argo CD has been adopted by many organizations from different sectors: financial, healthcare, retail. Okay, and it has a very good number of contributors who are actively contributing to. this project uh, it has more than 2000 stars and i think around uh, around 400 uh, contributors to this particular project okay and uh, consider it when you want to go for multi cluster multi tenancy kind of approach uh, that's where uh, this uh, tool shines a lot uh, these are some of the core terms uh, from argo cd perspective i will try to put them in simple words you can say that application is a, a argo cd custom resource that you create and that resource basically is what where you mention that hey go watch this particular repository and deploy whatever present in that repository to my target cluster that i will let you know that's what the argo cd application does for you argo cd application source type is basically where uh, which tool you are using uh, it can be git it can be helm it can be customized so what kind of source you are using to maintain your uh, packages uh, target state i have already talked about it live state is what actual state is all about uh, you have sting status option to see if your actual state and desired state are matching or not uh, if you want to compare what is been present in git versus what is present inside cluster you can use the refresh option for that okay uh, it has option to show you the health of your application and uh, yeah i think these are uh, more important parameters uh, or terms from the argo cd perspective uh, this is how the overall argo cd architecture uh, look like it has different component like api server application controller redis dex server notification uh, controller and so on more about uh, this i will talk in next slide okay so instead of focusing more on this diagram i would say when you deploy argo cd these are the different component that get deployed as a pod starting with uh, you can say like a dex server what dex server helps you is uh, it is a open id connect identity provider uh, it helps argo cd to authenticate users others uh, applications in a, a, like ldap google or github authentication you can use those authentication to let someone access your argo cd thanks to the dex server you have a notification controller which basically helps you to send notifications from argo cd to slack or any of your uh, monitoring kind of system as well you have a redis uh, db present here uh it's a in memory data store as i think most of us know it helps to maintain the latest uh, status you can say of your applications you have a repo server here uh repo server is responsible for fetching your manifest file from your git repositories okay and it communicates with uh, your git gitlab uh, or helm repository in ssh or https way as well and pull all your uh, rep application manifest files or infra manifest file from that repository okay and argo cd server is the critical one this is the main component uh, that controls all of them you can say it it helps to communicate among each others uh, you have a application controller component so whatever app argo cd applications that you will create right uh, to maintain and manage those argo cd applications is what this uh, argo cd application controller does 
Uh, we have another component called as a application set controller, but to be just clear, uh, this is a kind of extension to the Argo CD. It is not the actual Argo CD component, you can say. Okay. Uh, that's how your Argo CD UI look like. Uh, anyhow, we'll have hands on so you would get to know about this much in detail. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think maybe this picture would also help uh, Vinit where uh, your GitOps tools comes into the picture. Like CI plus GitOps, you can say instead of CI plus DD. Uh, your developer commit the code into the source repository. Uh, your CI system, now in this case, I'm using Jenkins, but it can be GitHub Actions or GitLab pipeline. They will build the code for you and then it will push to Docker registry. And then uh, if you are using uh, directly Jenkins or any kind of tool, you can use webhooks uh, to let your Git repository aware what the new version is been present. And then Argo CD will continuously keep monitoring it and push it. The other way to handle or let uh, your Git repository aware of what new version available is, there is a component called as a Argo CD image updater. Uh, so this image, you can say I tried to simplify it here. Your Argo CD image updater will constantly keep watching your container registry. Uh, let's say you have uh, deployed uh, Nginx 1.0 inside your Kubernetes cluster as a pod. Uh, you have its uh, manifest file here. And let's say I push the new change called 2.0 here. Argo CD image uh, updater will keep a watch. It The moment it see, okay, there is a new version, it will go and it will change the tag inside your infra repo. And then it's your Argo CD server who sees, okay, earlier there was 1.0 mentioned, but now I could see it is 2.0 and it will push that change for you. Okay, so that's how GitOps gets fit into your uh, CI/CD system. Okay, again, uh, this was just to uh, put it as a reminder. As I mentioned, application set is not actual uh, Argo CD component. It is an extension extension to uh, Argo CD uh, to provide a kind of templating engine when you want to, uh, let's say, do a multi-cluster kind of de uh, deployment. That's where our application set component does helps to you. Okay. Uh, now we will start with the hands-on. Uh, just prior that, I want to let you know that there are different installation options available if you want to deploy Argo CD. You can deploy it as a Helm chart. You can deploy it as a customized way like overlay and all. Or the popular approach is I, you can use multi-tenant approach, basically a script provided by them that you can use. If you don't want all the Argo CD features, then they have Argo CD core. Uh, as a separate, which will only deploy the necessary components and it will not provide you all the features. But uh, generally, I would say multi tenant installation is what approach I have used in my customers' uh, use cases. And I think most of people does use that. Again, it has two different types one is a non high availability installation, and one is a high availability installation. What, what does that mean, non high availability and, and high availability, is if we go back to again the previous slides, right? you were able to see we had these different pods available. There is only one set of each pod. So this is a kind of non high availability. In case of high availability, you have more than one pod of each of this component, but those pods will be running on a different nodes of your Kubernetes cluster. So that in case, let's say one worker node gets some issues, then the other pod, uh, like for example, Argo CD application controller, which is hosting uh, running on another node can still serve your request. So in again, simple word, your uh, high ability mode is basically number of replicas for each component would be more than one. In non high ability, it will be one just single one. Okay. And again, in that as well, high ability and high, non high ability mode, you have cluster scope and namespace scope. When you say cluster scope installation, your Argo CD will have cluster level of access. In namespace scope installation, uh, your Argo CD will only have access to whatever been present inside the namespace in which Argo CD has been installed. This gets used uh, in like a multi-cluster deployment if you want to do. I will show the Argo CD at scale later. Uh, that's where uh, this 
mode of installation does help you okay so now let's i think enough of theory uh, we should uh, go and do some hands on so we have created a lab here as uh, you can see i will say uh, are you able to see the cloud yoga platform that i am sharing to you all Can yes. Yeah. Okay. So I share the link in the chat. Yes. So I am sharing the link in the chat now. So what I would suggest is, if you are a first-time user, uh, you need to sign up to this uh, Cloud Yoga platform, and after that, you would be able to see what you are currently able to see on my screen. So I will give you a minute or two. Maybe you can sign up and uh, just let me know in chat, and then we will go ahead. I will start doing these hands-on for you, and uh, you can follow the same inside uh, your Cloud Yoga. console as well and yeah in case of any doubt just ask here either me or uh, oshi is also here right oshi can yeah, yeah, oshi is here yeah so i have provided the link in chat i would say access that link if you are accessing first time create your uh, sign up and uh, do let me know in the chat itself uh, then i will go ahead for the okay so and again uh, once you sign up then once you land on this page there is this lab setup option available you need to click on that lab setup what it will do is it will spin up a kubernetes cluster in the backyard of this application and we will be able to do a live hands on inside the kubernetes cluster that will be created for everyone individually uh, in the backyard of this system i think i uh, oshi has provided the sign up page for you all so what you can sign up to that page and then you can click on the link that i have shared and uh, once you sign up to this page i would say click on this lab setup option it will take uh, like a 2 3 minutes to spin up lab for you i have clicked on it just now uh, so we will wait for you guys to sign up uh, and at least couple of you once you sign up and uh, click on this uh, setup lab option do let me know uh, we'll move ahead with the hands on so once you guys sign up come on this page and as you could see on my screen once i clicked on a setup lab uh, it will show it will create the labs for you in this way okay you will get the terminal here you will have uh, again one good thing is they have inbuilt a uh, uh, code editor as well if you see this option open id if you will click on it it will open a online code editor for you okay great arun i think arun's lab is lab setup is also done okay and what are you are able to see here is basically what you have at your uh, root path here take it okay if you see it's a single node cluster that will get deployed for you so yeah again as arun mentioned if uh, for others as well if the, your lab setup is ready just let me know in a chat and uh, we'll move ahead with the hands off okay i think what they can do is they can put uh, if they are using windows they can put half screen of zoom half screen as their lab setup so that they can do parallelly uh maybe i didn't follow you so what we can do is you can they can just take that tab and they can do half screen of if they just drag it to the left hand corner of their uh, i don't have a windows system i could have had shown them so i'll just share i'll just show you how it will be done so i'll just share my screen for a while so this is my lab setup right you know what you have to do is uh, 
just take your uh, entire window which is like this and just pull it to the left hand corner so what happens is it will just make sure that one screen is available here and one screen is available there instead of just parallelly changing the tabs so that is what we do in windows right just drag it to the left hand corner extreme it will just take half of the screen and uh, zoom to the right hand side and they can just get it sorted okay 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 Got so it. that's how it is Okay. okay. So for Amit, it's reconnecting since forty seconds. Amit, uh, normally it will take I think two or three minutes to uh, set up a lab for you. Okay. Prabhu's lab is also uh, ready. Uh, Pankaj labs is also ready. Harshit's labs is also ready. Okay. We need everyone's. I think majority of us are able to spin up lab. Uh, Amit. Uh, i would say uh, in interest of time i will start with the hands on uh, just now for all of you uh, this lab will be available even after this session for you all to keep trying on okay i have added all the instructions here uh, so that you can autonomously as well follow these things okay uh, so as part of prerequisite uh, i hope you have already your personal access token uh, generated for your github account do fork these two uh, repositories uh, okay i think there is some typo first is this one repository that i want you all to uh, fork and there is this another sample application repository okay that i have again pasted in chat that also you can fork uh, grish saying not sharing Girish, so are you? You are not sharing the screen, so you just have to share the screen now. I'll just allow you to share the screen now. One second, you just can share your screen now. Uh, so my screen is already, I think, okay. I not understand. Shared. Okay, okay, okay. So it's visible now. Yeah. Cool. So what I was saying, uh, fork this one repository. And uh, there is another, so this repository is for Argo CD demo purpose. And the sample app uh, in our case is this one, pod info demo. So is my screen still not visible, Vineet? I think. Uh, okay, cool. So now Vineet is also able to see. Yeah, I have removed the hide button option as well now. So. Again, clone this, for this repository to your account. And apart from this one, uh, I had actually made a typo here. You can fork this repository as well that I'm pasting in a chat now. Okay. So this pod info demo is basically you can consider as our sample app that we have. Okay. And good thing about this platform, some of the commands, uh, wherever you see green here, you can run from there as well. Okay, it is showing uh, the same as what we can see here. Hope all are able to fork those two repositories. Can somebody confirm? Okay, thanks Nikul for confirmation. So we'll go ahead now. Uh, so for uh, to install Argo CD, we will first create a namespace. Uh, either you can run this command from here or you can copy this command. You, the moment you will click here, the command will get copy pasted here. I'm clicking on this one. The Argo CD namespace has been created for me. Okay, and uh, you can verify the same. Uh, just one note, sometime uh, there is a bit of issue with this terminal your command or browsers, uh, whatever you type, may get refreshed here, but don't worry. You can check those in a history command as well. Okay, just do control R and you will be able to see the previously executed command. So now uh, namespace has been created. In this namespace, we will do a non-HMO kind of, you can say, deployment for Argo CD. So 
i will try to execute here itself so what's happening is it has gone to this particular path and it is trying to deploy all these components as part of argo cd installation uh, i can copy this command and you can see your uh, different components that we initially discussed are getting created here you can check it from here as well so it will take few seconds till that i would say go to the next command and uh, i am going to use the argo cd uh, cli here uh, just like the way we have kubectl cli right we have argo cd cli as well available uh, so we'll deploy that argo cd cli here okay so uh, you can deploy it from here itself how you can verify it is installed or not just try argo cd fn fn help okay as of now the installation is yet to complete so it is saying command not found so once the installation is completed if you will run this command again it will show you uh, the argo cd cli is available meanwhile let's check if our argo cd got installed or not okay it is taking a bit of time just as a fy note based on experience i would say argo cd is a bit of resource heavy when compared to flux cd but again because it provide you that many capabilities as well okay so pods are still getting up uh, we are checking here meanwhile let's see if argo cd commands are available okay it is taking time let me check the okay so we have each instance of three uh, three libran okay majority of the pods are coming up hope you guys are still able to follow it till here right you are uh, i hope I have executed all those commands that I am executing here itself. Okay, only now the repo server and the dex server has yet to come online. Okay, now only the repo server is remaining. Okay, cool. So if you see here, our all the Argo CD application uh, components are up. let me see if the argo cd cli is up or not okay not yet it's taking a bit of time today generally it won't it takes just few seconds to install it for rest of all uh, can one of you confirm that your argo cd application is also up are you able to see all your argo cd pods are up cool thanks thanks guys so this is a bit of kind of glitch if you see as i was mentioning it will remove the old command but nothing to worry whatever command you had executed it will be there so now this has stop scrolling if you see now let me try uh, if i do control r argo cd help it shows the last argo cd related command and there it goes you have now argo cd cli available okay so uh, now if you see if you want to see all the argo cd related component uh, been deployed you can do just kubectl get all hyphen and argo cd okay you would be able to see the deployment and services for all now to access the argo cd ui i could have created a ingress and expose it but there was uh, some issue coming with the lab and so as a hack i uh, thought of we will use the argo cd admin dashboard command to open the argo cd console so now firstly uh, if you will try to execute this command okay it would give you error that it is not able to find the config map Uh, if you will run it on lo your local machine it won't give you this kind of issue so to avoid what is happening here is 
uh, to open the argo cd admin dashboard it need to find this particular config map and it is present in this particular namespace so what we will do as a hack is we will install the qbns utility uh, you can consider qbns utility helps you to avoid typing the namespace again like if i want to right now run something in uh, namespace argo cd i have to pass it hyphen n right but with qbns i can switch permanently to that namespace and whatever command i will execute those will be executed against the argo cd namespace alone okay so we'll first uh, download that utility for now uh, don't execute this command first directly um, come back here install uh, these uh, utilities on your machines so the moment i have clicked on this one ideally on your root path here the tar z will be downloaded as you could see here okay now let's untar them okay so again if you see here those utilities have been uh, taken out uh, cube ctx just fyi uh, helps you to uh, you can say switch the context from one cluster to other easily for now you don't need it now we will move it to our local bin so now those utilities would be removed okay and now what we will do is as i have mentioned in this command uh, we will switch to the qbns uh, argo cd namespace as you could see here active namespace is argo cd now whatever commands i will uh, run here for example get pods it will run against this particular namespace alone okay this happens right most of the times we want to work on a particular namespace so this utility is handy for that now uh, to avoid that uh, terminal getting refreshed issue what i would advise is copy this command don't execute it here uh, come back to this uh, particular uh, online editor you have and paste it here and it will make your argo cd ui available on uh, 8085 port uh, just to clarify argo cd ui normally runs on port 8080 but uh, because there is uh, this vs code editor itself for cloud ui is running on 8080 port i am uh, deploying it on a port 8085 basically it's this command is a kind of kubectl port forward kind of command okay so now i have executed here it has mentioned that the ui is available here how you can access that ui is come back here you would be able to see this option argo cd ui app click on that option and you would be able to see your argo cd ui available here okay do raise your hands in case uh, if you face some issues or if you are able to follow till here just uh, let me know in chat if your argo cd installation work correctly and if you are able to access this console okay i will wait uh, for confirmation in chat box again just to recap what we did is we installed argo cd and uh, after installing argo cd we installed the qbns utility using qbns utility we permanently switched to the argo cd namespace and then we ran this uh, command in the vs code edit editor because here it does not get elapsed okay and then we went back ahead and clicked on this particular ui uh, which will open the argo cd ui for me okay uh, thanks uh, kunal i think you are able to access it uh can someone else as well confirm if they are able to access so then we'll move ahead cool okay uh thanks nikush for confirmation so now uh, we have many scenarios here but prior that i just want you to get bit familiar with this argo cd ui so the application part that i was referring right you can create it from here from argo cd ui we will do it 
uh, we will explain every components available here. Apart from this uh, application uh, console, you have setting options available here. Uh, it contains different options. If you want to configure your repositories, uh, for that you use this particular uh, option uh, and pass your repositories name, be it is Git or Helm chart or any repositories, those you will pass it here. Okay, so that's what the repositories is for. How Argo CD connect to them is uh, using SSH keys, you can say. It uh, use the SSH option to validate uh, and connect to right uh, GitHub or GitLab uh, kind of uh, Git uh, sources, you can say, remote repositories for you. Uh, don't focus on this one, not immediately needed. As I was mentioning, uh, you can deploy to any remote clusters, uh, but to deploy to those remote clusters, you need to add uh, those remote clusters here from UI, or you can do it via uh, declarative way as well. This is important component, project. Uh, project is basically, you can say, a logical grouping of your different applications that you create. Uh, a typical use case for project is, consider I have a uh, dev team separate, QA team separate, and uh, your production team separate, right? So you want to install uh, Argo CD for each of them. Uh, instead of creating separate Argo CD instance, you can create one Argo CD. You can create separate projects for each of the team. And uh, Argo CD has its own, uh, you can say, kind of RBAC mechanism. So you can give dev team access to only dev project, QA team access to only QA project, and uh, production team only access to pro uh, production project. That could be a one use case. Second use case is, let's say you have multiple teams, multiple teams, application team I'm saying, working on different microservices. So for each of those teams, you can create separate projects. And uh, inside that project, they can play uh, using Argo CD on their particular microservice without bothering much about uh, others. Okay, so that's the use of project case. By default, Argo CD create a default project. You can create your own separate projects as well and give a name to that. Okay, apart from that, yeah, you have this account option. As I mentioned, Argo CD has its own way to provide you access, thanks to that uh, DEX and all. So you can configure your accounts here as well. And uh, yeah, if you want to customize this UI, you have this option available. Uh, if you are enable dark theme, it enable dark theme. Okay, so that's about the uh, UI part of Argo CD. Okay, uh, typically, uh, when let's say you expose Argo CD via ingress and all, you will not be directly landed on this kind of home page. But if you will click here, no, you will get this kind of actual landing page for Argo CD. Okay, this was just as I FYI. We will not uh, do that right now. So now, now we will go ahead with the demo further. Okay, and we will try to deploy one sample application. Uh, I have now introduced you to Argo CD UI. We have a sample application into this pod info repository that I mentioned. Okay. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you can open this, uh, the fork repository here. Uh, all that we need is just the, uh, you can say the URL for this one. Okay. I copied this particular URL. Go back to the Argo CD console. Now what I want to do is I want to deploy this application. So this application uh, has basically a Helm chart. Okay, pod info application has its Helm chart. I want to deploy this Helm chart to my default local cluster. When I say default local cluster, as in on the same cluster where my Argo CD currently running, but not necessarily you can deploy it on any remote clusters as well. Okay, so I want to deploy this app uh, to my Kubernetes cluster. So Again, I just copied uh, the Git repository uh, path here. Okay, I will go back to the Argo CD. I will click on the new application. I'll give you any name, for example, like let's say pod info. Okay, I'll select the default project. Uh, sync policy. So Argo CD lets you that flexibility whether you want to automatically uh, let Argo CD fix in case of issues or you want to do it manual way. Normally we do it automatic way. When you click on automatic, you see two options. One is a self-fill and a prune resource. Self-fill is basically you can say, 
Okay, Yani Kunj, I think you have some questions. Uh, Vishwas, can you unmute Nikunj? Sure, I'm doing it. Uh, Asked to unmute. Yep. Uh, suddenly, I'm seeing a bad gateway uh, in that uh, Argo City application. Bad is gateway? Is it to Fine Auto or something? Yeah. Oh, right. So, in so the I think UI it was. Sorry. Probably wait, wait. The, yeah. I think uh, you got the 502, right? Let me yeah. refresh it on my side as well. Okay, so I'm not getting, I understood what has happened. I think you might have run the command uh, Argo CD admin here and that might have got vanished. Okay. Uh, okay. Check if that's the case for you. Uh, no, Argo CD command. Yeah, may let me. It it shows something like a prompt. Uh, yeah, yeah, like Argo the way CD. like the way you are able to see on my screen. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So to avoid that, uh, as I mentioned, right, click on this open ID. You will have the uh, online VS Code editor, and there, click on the terminal, and just in this VS Code terminal, run this command. Uh, okay. This one is pretty stable. Uh, there is a bit of issue with uh, this terminal. That's the reason I, I had faced this issue. That's how I understood that I can use this as a hack. Here okay. it won't get disturbed. Okay. Let yeah, me know. Trying, if, uh, trying again. No problem. Sure. So Just copy that thing. command and run it here. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Now it is back. Thank you. Uh, cool. Okay, so again, let's go back. We will deploy our first application. Uh, we'll give it a name like pod info. I will deploy it in default project. Okay, I'll select the automatic uh, as a sync policy. Cell field option, as I uh, mentioned, let's say if someone manually deletes number of pods or anything, Argo CD, uh, once I click on this, it will always make sure that whatever is in Git is again recreated. Prune resources option is basically, let's say tomorrow, if I delete this application itself, I want all my resources to get removed out of cluster. So for that, this prune resource option gets used. Okay. Uh, if you want to create namespace where you want to deploy, you can click on this option. For now, we will deploy in the, in the default namespace alone. So you can keep it as it is. Now here, I will pass the git. You have option to pass the git or Helm repository. I will pass the uh, HTTPS path of my repositories. Uh, in your case, only different thing would be here. You would have your username. Okay. Automatically it detected the branch here. And now if you would see, it will, it was able to go back there and try to see all the different paths available inside my pod info repository. Uh, we will be using our Helm chart, which is present at chart slash pod info path. Okay. And uh, now we will decide on which destination. So currently we have only one cluster. So we will uh, select that. We will use the default namespace for now. Okay. And one good thing is Argo CD was able to fetch my uh, values.yaml file directly. If you see here, it was directly able to go here. It, uh, it went inside this particular path. It saw the default values.ml all those values present in that it was able to fetch me here in the UI itself. Okay. You can see the image tag version and all those things. So apart from this, uh, if you want to see how this can be done declared or what YAML it generate, you can click on the edit YAML option. It will show you the YAML it has generated in the backyard. We'll be using this YAML in the declarative setup we'll be doing after this. Okay. So for now, cancel it. Come here. See all the options are being present here. What we will do is before clicking on the create, let's go back to our uh, this console and we will watch our default namespace. Okay. So right now it is connected to Argo CD. I will use the default namespace by this way. Okay, so currently there are no pods running. Now I'll go back again to Argo CD console and I'll click on the create. So the moment I click on the create, it created this Argo CD application custom resource. Okay, 
if you see it went ahead let's go back here okay we can see that it has by now deployed our application as well okay this rich ui is uh, the best thing i found about argo cd it shows that this is the custom resource that i created called the application it went ahead it deployed that helm chart for us it created a service it has created a deployment that deployment created a replica set that replica set has created a pod for you okay it has created endpoints as well we can go here we can see our pod is running if you want we can see the services on all those parts as well okay so you can see that it directly used that helm chart and deployed for us here okay so we are able to deploy our first application here using the argo cd ui option let me know if some of you are able to get till here yani kunj go on if you have any question yeah it is giving like unable to create an application i think did i missed anything not sure Mm. it's Did giving that four? error yeah four case properly fine maybe you you we have to give anywhere that uh, uh, pet token uh not yet as of now i would say uh, okay. all that again let me repeat what i did is uh, i went here back again okay let me show i click on the applications i gave the name okay yeah. if me name you can give here you select the default project i selected yes. then uh, automatic policy uh, in the repository here uh, i went back here to the my fork repository i basically copied the https uh, path you can say yep. uh, this one i copied Same. here okay i selected the path here for example let's say if i copy it here again my url okay in the path i gave him the path where my helm chart is present it is chart present for in... info right yeah, yeah chart correct. slash pod info i went back here i selected my default cluster i passed the default as a namespace here okay and uh, yeah that's the only thing i did i just created on a, a clicked on a create application yeah uh, i think same step but yeah when i'm clicking on create it is yeah giving an error i don't know what error it is giving to you uh, it's difficult to get it's just so how partially you, it's half how you half can verify uh, is uh, you can click to... on this app and click on the events option you will be able to see some uh, it is not thing. able to create basically app just create button gives that error any particular error message it is showing or showing unable some... to create application and then um, yeah it's it's a long message but it's it's partially cut it down not sure i'm putting into and your name is nivad right so nina uh, i'm sending it on chat to you maybe oh it says too long okay let me cut anybody it else face issue You guys can raise your hand with the reaction so that we can just uh, unmute you if required. Something like this. I just send you a message. Yeah, I've been getting the same error. Okay. So for Raghav, it is getting deployed. I think Prabhu is getting some issue, right? Unable to create an application manifest for info is invalid. Generate manifest in chat. Okay, working for Kunal. Okay. Now, uh, what the error message is? Default. Okay. Okay. So, what this error message is saying is, Argo CD under the hood uses when it want to deploy Helm chart, it uses Helm template command. Okay. So, Helm template command basically what it does is it goes to your helm chart repository whatever template files are present inside your template path right 
basically tries to generate again a plain yaml files and then it does kubectl apply hyphen f2 all those yaml files so in this case it is showing that your hem template is uh, basically it is not able to do it can you delete that app again anyhow i would i was about no, to show you yeah app is not at all created it's exactly on create button it is immediately giving this error so app is not created yet so uh, this kind of uh, ui as well you are not able to see like application no 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 app is not created at all so of course it's okay. once app can is you, created can we try it again can you try creating it again yeah sure yeah same message maybe i can just cancel out everything and uh, press uh, pod info project name default policy automatic i think you check both then foreground url let me copy oops for the interest of time i think we have to move on yeah but let's do one thing uh, please do connect with me after a time uh, like uh, like retry and just connect with me on linkedin so we can just get everything sorted from our side okay 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 so sure. i think uh, i'll uh, mute you folks and you i think nina you can continue okay so we'll come back to you uh, nikun on this later okay so uh, now we have deployed at least for rest of them to whom it is working we are able to deploy our first uh, helm chart using argo cd application file to our uh, target cluster okay awesome uh, so for nikunj it worked in a second attempt cool so now what we will uh, check as a demo is now we deployed our application okay to cluster now let's say uh, i want to change something in this application and want to see if argo cd is able to detect it or not okay so for helm chart particular case i am saying argo cd only do the uh, reconciliation when i say reconciliation as in uh, it uh, it try to deploy the new changes only when the version uh, of your chart is changed okay uh, it is its default behavior for helm chart you can change it uh, to like commit as well like someone uh, make some commit it will still be able to deploy it but for now we will be uh, showing the demo of how you, if you change the version it will go and deploy the pod for you a new pod again for you okay so again on this console i will keep uh, a watch on the pod currently this is the old pod that is running here okay now uh, let's go back to the app here okay i will not be doing anything inside this app i have provided by the way instructions here how we will do the change is uh, either you can clone the repository locally okay when i say locally as in on this machine or in the interest of time i will directly go to the remote repository i will try to change uh, properties inside the helm chart and will be able to show you how it is argo cd is able to detecting detect it and deploy it okay so uh, maybe go back to your uh, folk pod info repository okay here you are able to see the values.yaml right uh, as a change what i will do is uh, i will edit it here itself okay you are you can see this uh, property here right color property it is currently using this color code uh, for demo purpose what i will do is maybe i will comment this one i will use the other uh, color property okay so i have commented out the old one i have used this as a new uh, ui color value okay apart from that can i go back uh, okay i will try to change the uh, tag as well of image from 6.3.4 to 6.3.5 okay just for demo purpose consider this is a, a change in our application we did uh, i will commit it okay only two changes i did i changed the image tag i changed the 
property of one of the environment variable you can say now the moment i change argo cd will not go and deploy or uh, able to detect any new change because as i mentioned for uh, the default behavior of argo cd for helm chart deployment is it will only detect change when the version in the chart.yaml is changed okay so just now we change the values.yaml we'll go to the chart.yaml okay and uh, here the version is 6.3.4 uh, what we will do is we will change it from 6.3.4 to 6.3.5 this is the value that i was referring to okay uh, before committing this change uh, let's go back here let's make sure that uh, we verify what is the current image that our pod is using okay how you can do that is go back to the kubectl get pods command uh, do hyphen dash o yaml and put a grep parameters and do image i okay so currently it is using 6.3.4 and now ideally after we change it uh that version it should deploy the 6.3.5 and the changed property okay you can see here the current value uh of the ui property that we change is not yet detected it is still using the ffd value whereas what recently we changed it to 2fd something values okay so let's go back here now i have changed the version number here uh maybe i can change it this one but this does not matter and i will now commit my changes okay so i have committed my changes now to this repository now argo should is should be able to detect it uh just one more thing uh, by default argo cd check after every 3 minutes it goes and check if there is something change in the repository okay yani you had some question okay hand uh, remote okay cool thanks so either we can wait for 3 minutes uh, yeah mit gone uh, vishwas can you unmute amit sure i am unmuting him in not so for example if we are not using helm chart and our yamls are directly getting generated in mm -hmm. for config map pod deployment in one single file so will mm -hmm. if we then after that if we make change in the config map will argo cd detect that yeah so argo cd can work with the helm charts can work with the plain yaml files as well okay so it it does work with those as well if you are not using helm chart so we just need to update our config map and commit is it yes yes in case of plain yamls you can do that okay okay now instead of waiting for 3 minutes uh, what i will do is i will uh, make it forcefully refreshed okay so can you see here it created a new replica set new pod has been created we'll go back here okay you can see that argo cd has created a new pod for me which ideally should have a new version and it has terminated the old pod okay how you can verify is again let's run the grep image command and you can see earlier old pod was using 6.3.4 now it is using 6.3.5 version okay uh you can verify it from uh, here as well uh click on your app go back to the parameter as well let's see we change the color property right okay earlier it was ffd now it is using the 2e okay so that's how argo cd is able to detect it uh, your changes uh, and by the way uh, this syncing time uh, which i mentioned that argo cd uses 3 minutes by default uh, to detect you can change it to change that uh this is a global setting in argo cd uh, you can define uh the interval sync interval to anything that you want inside the argo cd hyphen cm config map file uh 
uh, that Argo CD install. When you install it first time, it will be plain. You can add anything in that, and then Argo CD will use that as a setting for the next time. Okay. So that's how our Argo CD is able to detect the changes uh, and push it to our repositories. Okay, uh, sorry, push it to our Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so we have now demoed uh, how you can uh, release the new changes. Okay, now now let's delete this. Uh, we will do a declarative setup. How you can delete it? Go back here uh, and click on the delete option. Okay, uh, I can make it run in the foreground or make it run in a background as well yeah so to for that i need to pass my application name it will start deleting those resources if you see it is deleting those resources it has deleted the application is my port still there okay so our city has deleted the whatever it has deployed okay so now we did this demo in a ui way okay now ideally as i mentioned argo uh, or any gitops will suggest you to do things in a declarative way so we will do it in declarative way now uh, to do that in declarative way uh, from this console itself uh, we will clone that repository and we created application here from ui right we will and uh, as I showed you last time, there was a YAML file generated. Similar YAML file we will use. We'll push it to the Git repository that Argo CD will observe and deploy that app for you. Okay. So for that, there is this option available here. First, I would say, so this this GH is basically a GitHub client, just like kubectl client you have. Uh, I'm using this. It uh, helps a lot in my day-to-day -day work. So. Click on this command here, uh, sudo apt install gh. We will install gh client on our this terminal. It will take a few seconds hardly. Okay, so this has been installed now. You can check gh hyphen hyphen help. Okay, so it is installed correctly. Now we will authenticate ourselves. Now this is where you would use your PAT keys. Okay. So I am clicking on GH auth login. I am authenticating myself. Uh, so it is asking if you are using GitHub open source or GitHub enterprise. I am using the open source. So uh, by arrow you can move up down. I will select github.com because I am using the uh, not the enterprise the GitHub. Okay. It will ask whether you want to clone using HTTPS or SSS selects HTTPS protocol for Git operations. Now it will ask how you want to authenticate yourself. I will say, yes, I want to authenticate with my GitHub credentials. And then it will ask you whether you want to log in via browser or you want to paste authentication token. That means your PAT key. Select the PAT key option here again. Okay. And now it will ask you to paste your authentication token. So that's where I would say, uh, we will go back and uh, use the authentic uh, pat key that you had generated okay so use your pat key let me find my pat key okay i got my pat key i will deploy i will paste my pat key here okay as you could see uh, while pasting as well it will try to hide that details and it has successfully authenticated with my particular github account from here okay now just we will set uh, these global things uh, as those will be needed when we are committing something to our repository so use uh, email address that you are using for your github account so in my case this one uh, then i will also need to pass my github username Okay, and now we will clone the Argo CD demo Git repository. That is this repository that I had asked initially to fork you guys. Okay, I have created the declarative files here already. Just uh, 
now clone this repository on your console here uh, copy this command it pass my github name okay so i cloned uh, this repository and i get inside that repository Uh, uh from ui the application you can create the application from the uh, uh, declarative way as well if you open this particular uh, argo cd demo file okay you will be seeing the content in a commented state this is a this same content so as you could see i can mention my destination cluster i am basically passing the server address i am passing the default namespace as well where my argo cd application should go and deploy my sample app i am using the default project i have mentioned here the uh, repository url as well uh, just you need to make sure you add your path here i am setting the head just like the way we did in ui directory recurs basically option you use it if you are using some subfolders for that it helps i am passing the default project name i am i am defining the sync policies here as well prune and self is as we did it on the ui way. okay so this is currently in commented state uh, you would see the same now since i have cloned it it should be available in my here ui as well see here the file is available let me come out of this file instead of commenting line by line from here we will use our online editor we will use this file okay so you can uncomment this file okay so by default it does not have yaml extension uh, you can go here extensions select yaml extension uh, anything uh, any of your favorite yaml extension you can use okay so the, it has been installed now it is able to detect the yaml files i can uncomment this code okay and now here you don't need to change anything except you need to pass your particular fork repository here in my case it should be this one okay let me save this file and now if we go back if you will see our file is uncommented okay so this is the declarative way of defining your argo cd application what this we are telling basically here to argo cd is watch this repository and whatever you see in this particular repository deploy on my target cluster that i have mentioned here so in current case it will be deploying on this particular own cluster but it can be your remote clusters as well okay so let's apply this uh, file it has created argo cd root app i had given that name uh, if you see in the backyard it has created application okay but it is not deploying anything why because we have not defined any resource inside this repository any kubernetes resource that are this particular so it is like a empty app that is at the moment just watching your repository and waiting for some kubernetes resources that uh, for you to add and deploy it on your uh, local cluster okay so now uh, there is an important concept that i want to discuss that is called as a app of app in argo cd okay what the app of app patterns or app of app uh, concept in argo cd is you can create each app now let's say you want to deploy prometheus you can create one application file for prometheus you want to deploy redis you can create one application file for redis you can create every application file and you can either manually apply it or the better way is create one parent app as i uh, okay i'll show it here okay 
just from illustration perspective i am uh, going to use this one it's taking a moment okay these are like a rough diagram that i had created so you can have create one parent app and uh, let this parent app manage your particular uh, keep an eye on particular repository okay and in that repository you pass the application file that you create for all your microservices redis or any component and basically this application will deploy all those applications for you this is called as a app of a pattern where you have one app which is a parent app now in our case this argo cd demo app that we created it is a kind of parent app you can say uh, which is basically monitoring this particular repository and now what we will do is we will push all the apps here uh, for our sample application and argo cd should deploy okay so now we have uh, created this file we can push this same file itself okay you can add this particular file am i am i able to uh, communicate the app of app pattern to everyone can someone confirm or in case of doubt do let me know i'll allow you to unmute yourself now so you guys can ask some questions the window will be open for only 2 minutes so please unmute yourself uh, nimat can you repeat that pattern once again please yeah so uh, considering this way i have 10 microservices okay i can create similar application files i need to create similar application files one for each microservice let's say you have 10 different repositories okay you have literally different repositories uh, now let's consider these are the different repositories which are managing individual microservices okay if i want argo cd to deploy those uh, files obviously i need to create the argo cd application file like the way we created here okay now how i can deploy these files i can do the kubectl apply hyphen f for every application file that i create for every microservice or the other way is i create a kind of parent repository which i will ask argo cd to continue monitor and let argo cd know that whatever you will see here deploy it on my target cluster okay and inside that repository i will pass the applications files of each of the microservice that i am uh, creating am i able to communicate okay so uh, okay amit confirmed yes grish does that con uh, helps you to know app of app pattern or you have some doubt still you can raise your hands or just unmute yourself okay thanks sujit so take away as of now is for every resource that you want to deploy you need to create the application file for that uh, argo cd application file any component any redis any microservice as well you want to deploy You, you will keep that microservice in its own repository and you will create a argo cd application file and uh, for each of those services and now instead of manually applying those all you can create one repository which will only hold all your applications file and let argo cd monitor that file and whatever application files been created it will deploy it okay so now this is the same case we are doing here uh, this is like a parent directory which i am letting argo cd manage here and uh, in this file uh, i will first uh, i have first created this uh, application default application let me push this into my repository itself
Okay. So now you will see basically what we are doing is we had created one uh, application here, Kubesitter get applications that you would be able to see. And we now pass its own YAML file itself in the in our repository in uncommented state. Okay, you will be able to see it here. It is in uncommented state and now in Argo CD, let's refresh it instead of waiting for two, three minutes. Okay, right now it is not showing to you anything because Argo CD application is already created. The same application I am just pushing to this file. Okay, now the sample app that we deployed via UI, right? Uh, this sample app, we will deploy we will create an application file for that and we will deploy that into the into this repository and argo cd will create that app for us again okay so for that purpose again i have already created an application file for that which is in commented state here uh, if you see here you will see the pod info file here that i have created again it is in commented state where i have mentioned that this is my uh, sample repository where my helm chart or application is present this is the value default value that ml you should use and push it to my cluster okay so let's go back let's okay let me come out of this one to not create any swap file okay this is the file been here let me uncomment this one okay here basically we are doing the same thing what we did via ui I saved it. Let me see. Okay. So now this application file is created. Instead of now doing kubectl apply hyphen f this application file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push this file into the same repository which my Argo CD is already managing. You are able to see this file here, but it is in commented state. So Argo CD, for Argo CD, consider he don't know if there is something file like this. Okay. So now we will push this file. Okay. Mm, your message like sample app deployment. Okay. Now let's push this to my remote repository, which Argo CD is managing at the moment. You would see the file normally coming out of commented state here. Okay, so file has been uncommented here. Now, now, uh, so our file is here. Argo CD either can wait for three minutes or let me manually refresh it. I can sync from my UI as well. Okay. It's not detecting the file. There is some issue here. Why it's not able to deploy the app? Repository is also here.
has it got stuck somewhere no interesting okay seems there is some issue here let me check if uh, all pods are running for argo screen let me report forward the service this is strange i can check logs of argo cd server okay, so argo cd is not yet able to detect our application file itself are we missing anything in the file no charts.yaml is also present uh jani kul go on uh vishwas can you unmute nikunj i have unmuted everybody now so you guys can ask some questions yeah um i don't know maybe i have just checked it out uh, the other file which says customization yaml mm-hmm. and after that i am able to see at least the uh, uh, argo cd and code info de- de- uh, demo app as well not sure what is the purpose of that yeah okay so now i understood uh, i will explain this part so this customization file i have deployed so that i can manage argo cd using argo cd itself so right now whenever you will create a customization file in the repository that argo cd is watching argo cd consider that whatever is present in this particular file or what, the moment it sees something like a customization it consider that this is a customized uh, customization based folder so that's the reason it is doing that let's do in this way only that we will uncomment this file Oops. Nikul, uh, does that answer you? Why it was not able to detect it? Um, yeah. So basically, that that was the reason why it was not working, right? Yeah, yeah. Because for okay. Argo CD, consider now this is a customization, not a Helm chart. Okay. I'll comment out this particular file still. and now i'll comment it okay now let's go back here let's okay yeah there it goes so as you could see uh, now argo cd is considering this repository as a customization like a helm chart customization is a way of packaging okay and uh, now argo cd is able to detect both the applications files that are in commented uh, state earlier but now been deployed and argo cd now it is able to deploy the other applications you can see those applications here as well it deployed the pod info app that i declared in that repository and it created that part okay. you would be able to see the same here in your pod is been deployed in this way okay hope clear till here for all yagrish go on uh, so this app of app right so can we do that in flux also uh so in flux i i don't think the app of app pattern is available flux uh, 
flux always believes that uh, flux has this one to one kind of mapping only so this app of app pattern in customized way you can do that but uh, not in a native way like the argo cd promoted so app of pa app pattern as of now consider is uh, dedicated around the argo cd okay uh, and consider a scenario so we have this all these apps right microservices uh, mm -hmm. which we created um, uh, the helm chart or the customization and all right and we deployed it to dev environment okay mm -hmm. now we want to change few values like maybe like the nginx url or maybe the namespace and then deploy it to qa environment mm -hmm. without uh, copying the whole manifest so how mm -hmm. do we do that okay good question and uh, that's what we will see in our next demo like how you can promote releases from one environment to another environment no. okay so we'll uh, we'll be doing the other uh, uh, that as a next demo itself okay so uh, now before doing that as a part uh, let me explain how you can promote your changes let's say you are uh, going to deploy the hen chart this particular hen chart okay to uh, initially dev and then from dev you want to uh, move it to uh, qa or let's say you want to do it in staging first and then once you verified that staging changes are right now for production you want to change some values and push it to that what you can do for that is inside your helm chart uh, you have your default values.yaml files right here you can create your custom values.yamls like for in this particular case i have created this folder i will be defining two separate custom values.yaml files one for staging or dev where the staging specific value i will have now once those verified and if i want to push them into production or if i want to keep the production uh, related changes separate and only push some of the changes to that environment for that purpose we will have a separate customization uh, separate value.yaml file in this particular case okay as you could see here and how you can now define to argo cd to use that particular file is if you see here you can pass the path for your custom values.yaml uh girish does that answer your question uh so for a staging we have to define another application right different application yes yes so so what you will do is you will create a separate application file for staging and separate application file for uh, production okay and in uh, staging application file you will uh, you can say direct it to or you will let that application file know which custom staging specific values.yaml file it should use and for production uh, you will do the same thing it, you will let argo cd application know which production file it should use okay so consider like there are like more number of microservices so this is for like a single microservice service right single helm mm. chat like mm. consider like uh, if we have around 10 microservices mm. like do we need to write uh, like uh, 10 applications or so are system? you trying to say that let's say you have uh, one redis kind of service that you want to deploy to 10 different servers is that what you are saying saying to 10 different eco environments uh yeah you can think of like a uh, uh, 10 different microservice right 10 different helm charts uh, like mm -hmm. each of the microservice will have its own helm chart right right so right in that case like how do we do that uh, so this is like for uh, what you are showing is i think it's only for a single helm chart right if you want right, to deploy right. all the microservice 10 microservice from one environment to another environment Uh, mm -hmm. like then we there will be lot of application files right yeah so one good thing about argo cd is you can so in this particular case for demonstration purpose i used only one git repository as a source you can have more than one repository as well as a source and deploy them into one particular target argo cd has that capabilities available you can map one particular git rep uh, take values from one particular repository and push if you have more than one uh, repositories you can let's say in particular this scenario you have 10 different helm chart git repositories you can 
use those multi resources and still write a single application file to deploy them into your target uh, environment so okay. you don't need to write application file for every helm chart okay so argo cd has that facility okay you can write more than one uh, source of uh, information no thanks yeah. okay uh i think we are close to almost 12 uh, 10 uh i wanted to actually demo this thing but it will take another some few minutes okay uh conceptually but uh, i think does that help others as well to understand how you can maybe promote from one environment to other environment you can do this hands on later as well ah uh, hi nina just uh, i have one question yeah go on pankaj is there any way we can uh, authenticate with github uh, instead of pat because our pat we have like rate limit issues hmm hmm right so yeah there are options available as well you can use uh, different authentication mechanisms uh, ldap and uh, so on as well so pat i just use from the uh, for the demo purpose to make it easy yeah uh, i mean uh, when i am uh, like uh, taking data from github so at, at that time uh, is there any other way apart from pat Uh, you mean to say right now i showed you how to authenticate yeah. with the uh, pat key instead of that any like a regular way we clone the repository we use the ssh ways right yeah yeah other ways yeah correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. those are also available what, what are those sorry what are those ways like, yeah yeah we have the ssh way like in regular use case we use the uh, uh you can say ssh uh, way like in my regular uh, use cases i use the ssh way to connect to those repositories and uh, do my changes okay. got it thank you okay thank you okay so anyone has any other question how you can promote uh, from one environment to another environment if not then i will just jump to the last a uh, part of argo cd demo which is about how you can manage argo cd itself using argo cd okay i i take silent as a no as of now okay so first of all why there is a need for argo cd to manage argo cd consider it in this way that right now you have your uh, kubernetes cluster okay and you are using basically argo cd to deploy different applications uh, to your one many one two or many kubernetes clusters okay what will happen if tomorrow let's say i want to upgrade the argo cd itself if i will stop argo cd it will stop watching the my uh, all microservices and uh, then it will basically for a moment it will add a downtime kind of things for me to upgrade or maintain the argo cd so how we can avoid this scenario is uh, we, we we can let argo cd itself to manage the argo cd's upgrade and all how you can do that is about if you see in this particular repository that's the reason i had added this customization file here if you want to upgrade or handle uh, maintenance work of argo cd right now let's say i am deploying version 1.0 of argo cd i am using this particular uh, source uh, of argo cd if i want to deploy 2.0 all that i need to do come here and replace this particular file with the latest version file that i want to deploy argo cd or i want to upgrade argo cd okay so i will basically for now i will show with the same like the one that argo cd that we installed just now i will try to show you how argo cd start managing themselves itself i have uncommented this one i will argo cd to manage argo cd Okay, I have uncommented this one here. So now what is happening is Argo CD will go to this particular path, and whatever resources are there, it will try to deploy them. And those resources are, are already we have in our cluster. Okay, 
So if you go back here, if we go back to our root file, as of now it is managing only the sample application. But now if I will refresh it and then we'll sync it. Let's give it a couple of minutes. Can you see? Argo CD has started managing all the resources that we deployed as part of installation. Uh, like the way Amit was asking config maps and everything. Okay. This is the best use of app of app patterns in case of Argo CD, I would say. It has started managing all the pods that we deployed as part of installation. Whatever you were able to see here in Argo CD namespace. If you see, it will not try to recreate it. When we let Argo CD knows that go and uh, whatever resources that you are able to see in this particular path. So this is the file basically that we used for installation. So when we let Argo CD start managing and saying whatever you are able to see deployed here, Argo CD goes back, it tried to uh, deploy them, but it sees that, okay, I am already managing those resources. So in that case, it will not restart, uh, restart or recreate those pods. Okay. In case, let's say, and if you see this particular installation file, okay, let me open it in separate tab. This is a plain kind of, you can say one YAML file containing different Argo CD resources that we deployed. Like the way I think it was Amit who was asking, can we recreate a single YAML file and manage it via Argo CD? Anyone has any doubt, any question, feel free to just ask. Yeah, Nikunj, go on. Yes, Nikunj, you can unmute yourself. Yep. Uh, I was just trying to do that uh, staging and production part. But mm -hmm. so did the changes or edit that particular YML file with mm -hmm. the name staging pod info YML file. So mm -hmm. after that, I was expecting that it will create a new kind of uh, application and deploy all the things, right? To the mm -hmm. cluster. Right. But yeah, it's it's... Yeah, it is not deploying anything and it is not also showing any kind of uh, app in the UI as well. So do we yeah, have to... That, that could be because I don't know if you have created the namespace. What we have defined here... Yeah, is... yeah that is done. Like for two namespace, staging and production. Hmm, and okay. then uh, did that. So basically you are saying now you have pushed your uh, staging Report. and production yeah. file as well here, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Only so staging. Now because... Now, because we are using customization file, you need to add in customization file the entry of that file. Then you oh, will be okay. able to see. Okay. okay. Got it. Because uh, so consider in this way, customization uh, always gets dependent on customization .yaml file. Whatever you will define in this file mm -hmm. to manage, it will only manage those things. Okay. It will ignore other for other files basically. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this could happen, right? That we have 10 different resources. We only mm -hmm. want Argo CD to manage five resources. So in that got case, it. in this customization file, you can add it. Got it, got it. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, We use only uh, the customization here, right? So we did not use uh, the Helm for uh, in another way, right? We can use either uh, Helm or the customization, not both, right? Yeah, you can uh, in this. So for one particular subfolders, you can either use Helm or uh, customization. Yes. So in the instead of choosing Helm, we use the uh, we choose uh, customization. Yeah. So this customization I particularly use because uh, uh, to manage Argo CD using Argo CD. That's the main purpose I use here the customization. I think uh, using customization is easy uh, to manage than using help, right? Yes, yes. So nowadays, I think after 2019 or 20, uh, since when Kubernetes started natively supporting, I think, uh, customization, right? Uh, 
using customization makes a lot of uh, brings a lot of ease uh, to uh, manage different version of the same application instead of like so helm use the templating engine right but right. Uh, customization use the overlay mechanism so you right. just patch the resources rather than using those jinja to template it Cool. Yep, okay. now it's working fine. Okay, cool. That's great. Others also can try it later. Okay, so uh, to since we have a short time, now we'll go back to the slides. So as part of demo, again to recap, what we did is we installed Argo CD first. We uh, tried to deploy one sample app using Argo CD UI on the target cluster. We then also saw how you can declaratively create the same app and deploy. We discussed about how you can promote uh, releases from one environment to other environment. And then lastly, we saw how you can manage Argo CD using the Argo CD itself. Okay. So uh, now we will move towards the flux. Okay. Uh, so prior that, let's just delete the Helm, uh, Argo CD setup that we did. So for that purpose, uh, all that you can do is we use this Helm uh, install.yaml file, right? That so we will just delete it. So this will basically delete my Argo CD entire setup itself. The moment Argo CD gets deleted, all the application, everything that it is managing will get deleted. You would be able to see this is this will go now. Yeah, it is showing fail to load. Okay. So I have till here we are able to clear how uh, Argo CD can be leveraged. Okay. So we'll submit this one. We'll go back to the slides now. Uh, we have literally covered all the demo part around the uh, Argo CD. We did the installation. We did had a walkthrough with UI. We had an explanation about how the declaration, uh, declarative way you can define the Argo CD application. We did the demo of that as well. Okay. Now, let's say you, you want to manage GitOps at scale. Like you want to manage 10 different customs, uh, clusters, Kubernetes cluster. How you can do that using Argo CD is Either you can create one dedicated management cluster, deploy Argo CD on that, and from there, you, as I mentioned, you can connect to the remote cluster and deploy your resources. You can manage all the clusters. Okay, uh, you will get a good point from this perspective. Is you will have single pane of glass in one Argo CD UI. You will be able to see resources from all the clusters. You can now then use the projects to like one project for one cluster, another project for other cluster. But the disadvantage with this problem is it, in, it introduced the single point of failure. The moment if there is some issue with your management cluster, it will break all the uh, GitOps that Argo City is managing from multi-cluster perspective. Okay. So this can be a one way, but not a recommended way. Second way is like in case of Flux. Flux recommends you to have one Flux City instance installed per cluster, which is pointing to your individual uh, repos or a repo containing sub uh, folders and so on. Uh, but the challenge with this app, uh, problem is for platform or DevOps guys like us, we have to, when it comes to upgrade and all, we have to manage upgrade of all these individually. Okay. So the other better way would be like a midway path you can say is you have your management clusters. Okay. In that management cluster, you can install the uh, cluster scope Argo CD. Uh, kind of, you can say uh, you have some DR mechanism as well available for that. And then for every cluster, what you can do in management cluster, you create individual namespaces or uh, with either cluster name or organization name. And in those namespaces, you deploy separate Argo CD instances, which are namespace scope. So they would, won't interfere with Argo CD instances installed on the other ones. 
and let those argo cd instance manage your uh, couple of uh, kubernetes clusters uh, so kubernetes clusters okay that could be a one of the way when you man to uh, manage let's say like a 10 20 30 argo cd uh, 30 kubernetes clusters in a gitops way okay uh all right we'll move towards the flux cd quickly uh as i think maybe majority of you might be already aware uh the gitops term was originally uh, originally coined was by vworks team the one who are the creator of flux cd tool okay in fact flux cd came first then the argo cd guys saw that okay there are some things that we can improve and that's how the argo cd got separately created flux cd has the same capabilities as of argo cd but uh, flux cd is a bit of kind of opinionated way of managing the gitops i mean because they were the one who initially discovered uh, gitops and how that can be managed they provide you a fixed way of how you can and how you should manage the things okay uh, this helps when you are like a completely new org and first time you want to start i would say uh, uh, gitops things for you you want a stipulated way that okay this is the way i have to follow uh but again every thing has its pros and cons uh, there are some cons for of this and there are some pros of this good thing about uh, flux cd is it consume less footprints like resource wise compute and memory if you compare with argo cd it consumes very less flux cd was initially designed by considering the edge cases like if you want to deploy gitops on a edge devices uh, that's where flux cd is super helpful because it is lightweight compared to argo cd okay uh, these are the typical flux core terms i will not explain everything of these just consider that uh, the way we define application in argo cd you can create a separate resources git repository helm repository customization and all for flux okay now coming back to the installation part of flux does flux has ha non ha kind of things no flux does not have like officially ha or non ha kind of concept when it comes to installation but you can make it ha by scaling every pod to two they have that facility available and if you let's say like uh, for flux controller you create a two pods they will automatically decide out of those two who will be the one who will act as a leader and other will act as a standby if the leader dies uh, they will the other one will act as a uh, leader in that case and like as we saw in argo cd right it uses separate database like redis and all flux depends solely on a etcd it uses etcd as a way to manage it as a storage perspective okay and uh, as i mentioned management uh, it does not recommend you to install flux on one cluster and manage multiple clusters they recommend you to have one flux instance on each of the kubernetes clusters okay as mentioned it will be more suitable for the edge device cases uh let's now do the first installation of flux cd and then we'll explain the architectural part of it okay so let's go back again to the uh, our backstage instance that we had earlier so now to install the flux uh, you need to pass so flux suggests you to bootstrap using their uh, standard command this is where i would say flux is more convenient when it uh, than argo cd what i mean by that is for as i showed for argo cd to manage argo cd i had to create a hack a customization file and let argo cd use that customization file to point to the particular argo cd installation files right i had to create first at, at all my own repository and then i had to manually apply kubectl apply fnf like imperative way i had to let uh, argo cd know that watch this repository and what a resource comes under this any application manage it so this is what called as a bootstrapping so 
bootstrapping in case of argo cd is a manual way but in case of flux they helps you to bootstrap the entire installation uh, process they will create the folders for you and they will manage the installation file in the in that folder for you okay so let's do this uh, we'll first export here uh, pass your github account name here So since we are uh, using our personal account, uh, pass parameter as a true here. Uh, there is nothing fancy here. These are just the official commands that I have uh, used from the Flux documentation. Now Flux recommends the installation of Flux using the Flux CLI, just like the way we had a Argo CD CLI. Flux recommend you to use the uh, Flux CLI. So we will first install the flux cli copy this command here run this okay it will download the flux uh, cli for you it has installed it you can verify it uh, flux iphone iphone l one important uh, thing to share earlier so flux uh, cli is for flux v2 initially when uh, there was a flux v1 version that time the cli or a ct uh, command line it has was a flux ctl okay but uh, since flux v2 onwards they uh, kind of renamed their the client as a flux alo so flux recommended way to bootstrap your flux installation uh, is use this uh, typical standard command what this command does basically is you will be able to see it the moment i execute this command okay so run this first uh, bootstrap command pass your pat key uh, as i mentioned just for demo perspective i'm using that okay watch it here what it is doing is it is first connecting to your github account on that github account it is creating a repository called as a flux system which i had told him that repository name should be the flux system and there i'm passing him that create a subfolder called as a apps so it is connecting to that repository it is creating a subfolder called apps then after that it is creating a namespace for me inside my kubernetes cluster it is installing all its components and after installing all these components it will be ready for you so what it has done is if you will open this path so in my case since i had already created this path then in that case flux again will not create a new repository it will use the existing repository itself as you could see here okay what flux did is flux initially went here to uh, to my github account and try to see is there any repository called flux system in my case since the repository was already created it says okay i will use the same repository then as a path i had passed apps so it created apps folder inside apps folder by default it created a flux system folder ignore these files for now these are for demo purpose first time when you will install it you will have the flux system folder inside flux system folder it by default created a customization file and as i mentioned in customization file whatever resource you will manage those will be only created by flux it created two files one is a uh component file basically a crd of entire flux installation that is been available here okay and as you could see it create it has all the resources uh present here so now flux help me to avoid or hack any way of managing my uh flux installation or upgrade if tomorrow i want to upgrade my flux all that i need to do is replace this file with the new file okay so what flux did is flux came here it created this flux system repository under that it created these files after creating these files here after that flux went back again connected to my kubernetes cluster and there it created a namespace and in that namespace it deployed all those resources so if you will see here it has deployed all the resources these are basically 
typical flux resources. Okay, you can verify it from here as well. Can someone confirm if uh, if I'm able to communicate or in case of any doubts or hands-on while doing, you can do this hands-on right away with me as well, if you want. Anyone has any questions? I think everybody Sorry, is set. Shos? Yeah, yeah, I think everybody is set. I think uh, they are following the instructions. If okay. not, please do raise your hand so that we get to know, okay, uh, somebody is missing out or somebody is not missing out. All right. Yeah. Cool. So if no hands raise, consider I'm assuming that you are able to follow it here. So basically Flux is letting you know that this is the right way, do it in this way, and it will save you from burden of creating repository on your own, creating, like in case of Argo City, we created application files there, we'll let first ran the imperative command, right? kubectl apply f uh, Compared to that, Fluxity is saying, no, don't do that. I will help you with all the things in a GitOps way. It went there, it created that repository for me, stored the installation files there. After storing it there, it went here, connected cluster again, deployed my uh, resources here. And in the backyard, it basically created tunnel. It passed uh, your SSH keys and using SSH keys, it connects with your uh, repositories. Okay. And, but the only challenge initially with the Flux was, uh, Flux is a hardcore GitOps way, you can say. They, they had not provided any kind of UI, but after seeing the increasing demand uh, in the, community uh, members asking to have that UI at least available for uh, maybe stakeholders so that they can have an eye and all. So for that, they have launched a new product called as a view GitOps. Okay. And they have open sourced its UI and that UI you can use as a UI for your Fluxid. Okay. And to install that UI as well, again, they have created a separate client for that. So, Right now, if you will see, there is no UI been present here. So let's deploy the UI as well and see how the UI looks like. So for that, we will install this uh, GitOps client. They have created this client for that. Let's copy that uh, here. Okay. And let's install it. Okay. So I think the client got installed. Let's see. My bad. Yeah. So the client has been installed. Now, uh, before installing the uh, its UI, we will be doing it in declarative way alone. To connect to that UI, you need some username and password, right? Like admin is a default username. Uh, if you want to set some password, copy this command. And for demo purpose, maybe I will uh, call it like a test one, two, three. Okay. And now using GitOps, we will generate a YAML file. Uh, export parameter is to for generating this YAML file that you can see here. Okay. So prior this, uh, let's just make sure that we clone the repository that Flux has created for us. In this particular case, this particular repository. Okay, we will go here. We will clone this repository. What eventually I'm trying to do here is I want to generate this YAML file and push it into the same uh, repository that Flux is already using for managing its installation. So whatever I will deploy in that repository, Flux will still be able to uh, create those resources for me. Okay. So in this particular repository, I had already ran this command. 
uh, on your end you can run this command just first go to this path till apps path and then run this command it will create a file called view gitops dashboard like in particular case you can see here okay you can see so basically they are letting you to manage it in typical way uh, they are providing you the best practices to manage things okay uh, what resources are been here i will explain it uh, later for now i just wanted to give a look and feel of how the ui look like so i have uh, copied now uh, this file here let's uh, go back to the ui as well again okay so we have a id already available for us we will go back to the flux system uh, there is this for me this was uh, i had kept it in commented way if you are running it on your way it will be directly there on your machine and just commenting it out saving it okay the moment i saved it okay it is been uncommented now i will not like in kubernetes uh, ergo cd case right we had to first time run the kubectl apply hyphen f here i don't need to do that i am just passing this file again to the same flux system repository which flux is already managing for me okay so all that i need to do is uh, copy these commands here okay i am pushing this change the moment i push this change now let's go back and see if flux is able to detect it okay not yet let me see if my file got pushed here so in the way in argo cd you create a application file right in flux you create this kind of file you in uh, flux you create two resources one called as a helm repository to point to particular helm repository and a kind of the way in argo cd we did the destination the same way uh, we create a helm release file which tell flux how to connect to this repository pick the resources from that and deploy it interestingly you will see nowhere i am passing the cube uh, cube api server information where it should deploy so flux revolve heavily around your cube config file that you have so it will deploy to the same cluster only where your uh, currently flux is installed so can, as you could see in the meanwhile flux has uh deployed the view gitops dashboard for me and it is running okay uh how i can access this is i can port forward this service again now instead of port forwarding from here just copy this command but don't run this command from here uh we will go here we will run it from the id that we have online so on a port 9001 i am making it to listen come back here click on view gitops app uh, that i have created so basically we are connecting to the ui this is how the ui looks like i will use admin as default user and the password i pass was like test 123 okay. and that's how the ui look like for flux one good thing is the even though i pass the password right in the pass, uh, password file if you will see here it has hashed that file so now no one can know even even the, even if i pass this password into the git no one will be able to uh, decrypt okay the other peculiarity about this dashboard is in argo cd you are able to use the ui to create the things but flux design philosophy uh, philosophy says everything should be git first so they do they have not provided any option to create anything from ui it is just for from the observation perspective or monitoring perspective you can use this ui okay so you can define whatever application by default it deployed like 
we deployed just now the GitOps dashboard. It was able to see, you can see its Helm release file here. The sources that we defined uh, are been present here. Okay. Uh, it can uh, use the image automation to pull, but it is right now not needed. If you want to set up some kind of notifications, that also can be used here. But in day in, day out, like a typical DevOps or a person who is using this UI will use only to monitor something quickly. Okay. The only option that you can do is from UI is you can sync it quickly, just like the way we synced in a Argo CD. Okay. So that's how the UI look like. That's how the purpose of UI. Now, before deploying the sample app, let me explain what those files uh, were there that we just now discussed here. Okay. I think we'll compare it with the uh, files that I had uh, shown here. Okay. We'll go back to the slide. We'll go to the next slides and then we'll come back to again some hands on them. Okay, so uh, how the arch architecture of Flux look like is this one, but uh, this might look like a bit of complex thing. Uh, you can always take a look of what component it has deployed. It has a customized controller, it has a notification controller, source controller, GitOps controller. Helm controller basically is to manage any Helm deployments, Flux uses the Helm controller as it is. Uh, for any customization based uh, repositories, to manage those and deploy those onto target cluster, it uses customized controller. To send notification, it uses the notification controller. And even before Helm and customize comes into the picture, source controller basically keeps an eye on those repositories that you want Flux to manage for yourself. Okay. So if I will, if I have to explain how the journey or the resource flux create for you is, uh, we'll break it down this diagram into further way. So whenever you push a new tag into the flux, inside flux, you have a kind of a ref, uh, image reflector controller, you can say, which keep an eye on a new tags, if any coming, if some new tags come for your application, it basically push that uh, or it basically let image automation controller be aware that there is a new tag available. And then this image automation controller goes back to your Git repository. Let's say you have Nginx deployment file, which was having version as 1.0. Then this image automation controller based on the information from a reflector, it got to know that, okay, 2.0 is available. It will make that change in the deployment file as a 2.0. Okay. And after that, then your source controller comes to know, okay, there is some change in the resource. Then it goes and talk to customize first. Okay. So this is the interesting part about uh, Flux. You can say is Flux heavily, you can say loves customize. Even though you are deploying Helm chart, it will always go to customize controller. Customize controller, then let Helm controller know that uh, the values are being changed and then the Helm controller will actually uh, basically you can say deploy your resources in a Helm way. So compared to Argo CD where what if I want to deploy a Helm chart using Argo CD, what Helm, Argo CD does is it first try to talk to Helm chart. It uses Helm template command. If you in general run the Helm template command, it will just fetch you all the YAML files. And then uh, Argo CD do the kubectl apply hyphen f against those generated YAML files. But in case of Flux CD, it does not use Helm template command in the backyard. It use directly Helm install command. So you can say Flux CD do the Helm in Helm installation in a Helm way only. They are using the native Helm repository itself. They are not creating again the YAML files out of it. Okay, that's how the overall flow look like when someone push the change into the Docker uh, uh, registry, your image reflectors ch check if there is any change. If there is any change, then it will basically first talk to Kube API server of your Kubernetes cluster. Then after letting the Kube API server uh, knows about it, it pass a notification as well to Flux. After that, your Kube API server 
uh, let image automation know that uh, there is some change in the resources then your uh, image automation controller talk to your source controller let him know that there is some change in the resource then your git uh, controller will basically fetch the new resources and then your uh, customized controller and the helm controller will come into the picture okay that's how the uh, fluxity internally works for you okay this ui thing we have already covered uh, again maybe initially when i started exploring and working on fluxity i was always bit irritated to know why they are not you letting us to de deploy or do anything via ui so the reason for that is flux design philosophy is that uh, they want everything always as a git first where all the changes to the infrastructure or application should have been done via git only and this promote in a way kind of transparency uh, better version control and auditing capabilities as well so they basically are encouraging users uh, that do the git ops in a right way only and we are helping you with the right way okay uh, i have already talked about what that ui is for okay they have their enterprise version as well but uh, the enterprise version uh, is normally you can say the enterprise or go for that these are the typical uh, features that it provide now this is the interesting slide as i mentioned in argo cd we create the argo cd application file where we let argo cd know this is the target cluster this is the uh, remote repository that you should configure and that's it the one file but now the same helm chart if you want to deploy on the flux cd using the flux cd uh, in a way they have kind of decoupled it uh, they let they ask you to create two resources they said uh, create a resource of type git repository which will point to your git repository okay and then uh, it will also let you create a helm release file which basically helps you to know how to consume the helm chart available from that repository now interestingly it does not anywhere mention how to connect to the target cluster that's because flux under the hood uses the kube config you can say to connect to your target clusters okay and uh, compared to argo cd where i mentioned uh, the sync time is globally set you cannot uh separate it out per application in case of flux cd they leverage you for one application deployment uh, you can set a separate interval for another you can set a separate interval okay that's how the flux cd works uh argo cd is kind of bit flexible but flux suggests this is the right way you should do it it will save you from lot of efforts and let's say if i don't have access to that kubernetes cluster directly how would i deploy it to the remote cluster there is a way they have provided what they suggest is first create a generic secret in kubernetes and in that secret pass the kube config of that particular cluster and then in helm release pass that uh, secret information so that flux know how to connect to that remote cluster and deploy at all if you want to do that am i able to communicate till here or anyone has any questions before we move to the hands on i have given the unmute option so you guys can go and start asking some questions so that you guys can start learning about some things and that's it i think so So this remote cluster, right? Is it uh, uh, only applicable for Helm release, or like can we do it for? Uh, it can, uh, you can do that for customized things as well. Okay. 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 Cool. Okay. If no question, let's do to the go to the hands uh, hands on part. We'll deploy the application now. Uh, let me come out of this presenter mode so i have mentioned here how you can deploy the sample app uh, as i just now did clone the repository 
in this uh, particular path there is this app repository okay let's say the same sample pod info app that i want to deploy in flux cd way then for that just create a file here uh, like this name i had already created it for myself in this particular repository if you see kept it in uh, okay i have removed that uh, let me let me deploy this one itself guys can follow the same uh, on your console as well okay let me copy this file or to save some time what i will do is i have already created file for staging and prod promotion releases work so let me uncomment one of those file itself Let's deploy the app in staging itself. We'll create a namespace called staging. The namespace is here. Okay. Uh, I had already created the file for staging here. Okay. Let me just uncomment out this file. Uh, I think that's best copied from here. I'm just directly to save time, copying it directly to my remote repository. Okay. Uh, let me copy the staging one so that it should deploy to the staging namespace alone. We do it in this room. Let me uncomment this file. Save this file. I just need to change the name here. Okay. Uh, now I'm trying to show how you can deploy using a custom values file. Same like Argo CD, you can pass your uh, path to your uh, custom values file. So I'm directly going to deploy this into the staging namespace. Okay. So let me save this one. You could see the file is here. Let's uh, let's deploy this. Let's see if the staging file got uncommented or not. Okay, so the file has been updated here. So now let's see if we can see something in staging namespace. If it is able to detect this, not yet. We can use the UI to see if the Flux is able to detect the new resource that we tried to create. Yeah, so it is. it has detected, if you could see, pod info demo staging. And here it has created the sample app in the staging namespace itself. The app has been deployed here. You can verify the same here. It has this hand release file. It shows the resources, just like the way Argo CD via UI shows you the resources. It shows you in this particular way, how the app has been deployed. Okay. Like in Argo CD, we saw the YAML manifest. Here it shows the deployed YAML file, not the one that we kind of created. Okay. So that's how uh, fl using Flux, you can deploy the changes to your uh, particular environment. 
so again let's say to promote now i want to deploy the same app to production environment as well you can say now this is a staging app if i want to deploy the production app i have already prod, prod info file here that uh, you can see here there is one file as well here okay let me save it okay and now again let me just verify if the so what i'm doing is i deployed one app in uh, the pod info app in staging namespace now i will deploy the same app in production namespace okay so, but in this case it is using the production custom values file first let's create the production namespace okay the namespace is created no resource as of now we did updated the file uh, we will push this file now it from here let me push this file and let me keep watching again there is anything been deployed here let me see if the file got uncommented or not okay so file has been uncommented is flux able to detect it not yet it will take interval of 10 seconds as i have mentioned here for any inter so you can define here custom sync time if you want okay so it has deployed the application in production okay Ideally, it should start showing now the app here. Not yet. Okay. And we are deploying this app in. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Tuna. Uh, I missed to add update here the repository name for myself. That's the reason it has not uh, created my same app in production namespace. Let me just replace it here. Okay, let me deploy the sample app. I missed to comment out this uh, target namespace part as well. so now flux should be able to connect to this repository and deploy it into my particular namespace using the production custom values.yaml file let me see okay let's see if we can sync it from here taking time uh, currently you are using uh, uh, two different files right yeah so now if you see it has uh, deployed the yeah sorry girish you were saying something uh, yeah so my question was like uh, you are using two different file for staging and production right yeah two different custom values file yeah two different custom value and also pointing to two different uh, namespaces and all right, uh, right so right. Ca can we have a base file and then overlay with uh, uh, different uh, customize uh, yes we values. can do that we can do that uh, it just for to make the demo look bit simple i decided uh, we'll do in this way 
but the approach that you suggested uh, normally that's how i am uh, using it for one of my customers we have one base uh, repository where the files are there and then uh, in the overlay uh, for different uh, you can say environments we are using the patches uh, part that you are suggesting okay okay now as you saw here uh, the application is deployed in both the namespace now if i have to change or push the application from staging to production all that i need to do is copy this staging file from staging folder to production folder okay and flux will be able to detect it so let's go back here uh, to make it more easy in pod impo repository i had this production file which was pointing to 6.3.5 uh let's say staging is at this moment pointing to 6.3.5 so for demonstration purpose as you know our staging environment will be always ahead uh, than production so here i will first do it 6.3.6 okay image version basically i change uh pushed it to the staging and now let's see first uh, if the production is using that particular so currently production is using 6.3.5 i want it to uh, get promoted to 6.3.6 .6. so what i'm going to do now is uh i will copy the staging values.yaml file into the production okay so i can copy the whole file as it is let's do it in bit i'm doing it in bit uh, ugly way but uh, just to save the time So here initial was six six point three point five. Let me replace it with the staging values dot ml file. Okay, using six point three point six. Stage two prod. Okay, uh, so we have directly this time changed the uh, inside the application that our Flux is uh, managing. Let's see. You see, it immediately detected because I had specified the interval of ten seconds for Flux to talk to Git repository and see something has been changed. We can see if the version is changed or not, and there it goes. You have your new version available in production. okay so yeah that's how you can promote the releases uh, what you can do in argo cd you can still do in flux but the way they suggest you basically okay clear everyone how does flux work how you can do the things let me know in case of any doubt Uh, so now uh, i would say if no doubts are there we'll just we are just close to the end of the session so these are basically how you can summarize what differences between flux cd and argo cd flux cd helps you with the bootstrapping initial bootstrapping argo cd ask you to do it in manual way because they wanted to do give you a flexibility to decide how you want to do it flux suggests that let us help you how to do it okay uh, reconciliation as i mentioned in flux for every helm release or customization file you can define interval at what interval it should sync with your git repository but in argo cd it is at a global level setting one setting that gets used by all the argo cd argo cd applications 
both application support helm as well as uh, customization way okay as i mentioned uh, flux cd directly uses helm install command compared to that argo cd uh, use the helm template command so sometime there is a bit of delay compared to flux to deploy things quickly web ui uh, no doubt argo cd does have a rich ui uh, to let you sometime manage things in a uh, ui waves as well but uh, flux being strong on a github following making users follow githos they have provided ui just from a uh, monitoring perspective you can say another difference is uh, flux to uh, uses the rbac kubernetes native rbac but Ar uh, argo cd on the other hand uh, have their own uh, you can create your own users and all uh, using the dex server mechanism and uh, when it comes to the uh, multi cluster management uh, you can efficiently use the argo cd application set or argo cd itself uh, for flux also does multi cluster management but uh, they normally suggest you if you go to their channels they normally suggest you to have one flux instance per uh, cluster okay so these are some of the best practices uh, that you can always keep in mind for uh, following gitops uh, always have a separation of access uh, when i say uh, separation of access that means in terms of argo cd decide to whom you want to give access to a project to whom you don't uh, always maintain a separate uh, application config repository and uh, infrastructure config repository like in this particular case if you see our application was managed into the separate repository and the uh, deployment file or uh, you can say helm packages those were managed in the separate repositories that's how a standard gitops practice should be okay uh, this living room for imperativeness is something that argo cd says uh, because let's say you want to use hpa Uh, then in that case having a bit of imperativeness does help okay uh, this parameter is important i will tell you the scenario as well why ensuring manifest at git revisions are truly immutable look at this uh, screenshot here if you will deploy the resource in this way let's say uh, i am deploying argo cd open source version i am just passing the resource name but i am not passing the which version it should always stick to what will happen is if tomorrow the maintainers push the new version and by nightmare consider that that new version has a some uh, some issues if you don't pass the version here this gitops uh, tools will directly just install those newly upgraded resource uh, they will not be aware of if there is some bugs or not in that it does not have the automated uh, you can say uh, roll back in that constraint to again go back it will not go and change something in git repositories but when you define resources pass the version as well why i am saying this important was in one of the customers case uh, where i was consulting uh, on everything was working smoothly and on one saturday uh, we got the alert that artifactory service which was being managed by flux and one more application service i think it was redis uh, open helm chart that they were using and we were not getting any idea how come something that was working till last night no change has been done by anyone is failing today and then we realized that uh, the developer actually initially who was managing it had not passed the version hard coding here and that's the reason the last night uh, the open source maintainer had pushed the new version which was having some bug and uh, it spent after spending some time we realized it and then we fixed it and then we fixed it for all the uh, environment itself as well as we let everyone know that do follow this rigorously as a practice okay and uh, last but not least structure your repository correctly uh, don't mix i would say things so yeah that's about this uh, overall gitops things uh i am done on my side if anyone has any questions any doubt just feel free to uh, let me know 
do let me know if you have any it questions. It was an amazing session, by the way. This was an amazing session. And by the way, to all the participants, I want you all to turn on your camera so that we can have a quick round of a virtual selfie. Don't remind me of the Corona days, but it would be great if you guys can just turn on your camera out there and we can have one virtual selfie out there for all of us. Yeah, I think it was a great session, by the way. Of course, GitOps is also an maturing field, so I think we can have it. And I think we can have one photo, so it would be great if everybody can turn on their camera. So I'll start the camera. All right. I will turn on. And let's get it started. All right. Only these many folks, confident folks are all turning on the camera. Others, others don't leave, okay? You don't want the camera to be there. Just make sure that your name is available properly. That's it. All right, folks. It's an amazing session. Okay, Sajid, you didn't come, but okay, I'll pick one more. All right. So it was an amazing session. Thank you so much for everyone who patiently attended this session. And a quick round of an exit... I can say an exit uh, logistics that we have. We want you all to fill out this form and have a feedback about how was the session. Of course, the session was good, but we want a formal feedback which we can go back to and revise. Okay, Harshad, you open now. So let me just. Okay, I'll do mix match of editing. So I, I do a lot of editing, so I can do that. So not a problem. And if you can fill out the form and share your feedback, that would be great. And one more thing, how many of you have already registered for KCD Bangalore? So, okay, like you can unmute yourself. Okay, sorry for that. You can unmute and say uh, registered. So the thing is ticket.kcdblr.com. I think that is the that is one place where you can go and fetch the tickets out there. Where is it? All right, tickets.kcb.bangalore. So you can go out there and get your tickets soon so that we can have a continuous loop of communication happening. And that's it, folks. See you soon, and we will have a next round of introduction about MLOps, which is happening next week. And of course, Kiverno, Kiverno or Nirmata, whatever it is, they are they are having their own session. So of course, they are they are giving the session. And be how many of you are attending those two sessions? I I just wanted to know a quick round of introduction.